news, gentlemen, and disappointments. We are coming to you live from the Woman Caves in New York and Connecticut. My name is Leslie. And my name is Melissa. And we are Verbally Disaster. This podcast is copyrighted through the U.S. Copyright Office as well as the Writers Guild of America. Hey, it's Leslie here, and I'm here with my girl, Melissa. What's up? And we are discussing the documentary on Amazon Prime called Lot Lizard. What the hell is a lot lizard, you might ask? A lot lizard is a prostitute who frequents truck stop parking lots looking for customers. After dark, the lot lizards will come to your window. And if you don't know what a lot lizard is, it's a prostitute. If you don't know what a prostitute is, it is a woman or a man that will exchange their body and services thereof in in exchange for whatever's jingling in your pockets. What do you think, Melissa? Yeah. See that truck? (laughs) Give him a buck and you will get fucked. (laughs) (laughs) The Lot Lizard documentary is a 2016 documentary on Amazon Prime. It's directed by Alexander Perlman. It follows some women sex workers working through truck stops throughout the United States. Approximately 3 million truck drivers go back and forth between coast to coast through the U.S., probably Canada and Mexico. There are approximately 5,000 truck stops that litter the entire United States. So this director, Mr. Perlman, he has thousands and thousands of hours where he trolled the the truck stops (laughs) for video footage of the lot lizards so that he could create this movie and he decided to showcase three sex workers Uh, one was named betty another character was named monica and another woman jennifer so some of them felt empowered if you recall then there was a truck driver that was wearing like a air force military top and he was the boyfriend to Betty and Betty was the strictly business transactional kind of woman Betty was pretty hardcore she had she appeared to like have no feeling on anything she was doing she was strictly business business. and that's all it was for to get by to survive that to her was her job and she had a huge fucking ego huge with the marriage proposals and all the men want her I, I, I wouldn't look at it as a huge ego one she she's addicted to drugs and she's got to make herself like any other human being. She still had her teeth, which was amazing. Her. Yeah, she did. She wasn't like the other woman who was blind with some syphilis. We'll get. Oh, her. sunshine! Yes, so, we forgot about sunshine. You know, I mean, you gotta. You gotta and tequila. Out, you know, who knows if she really wants to be doing this? Is what she knows. It buys her her drugs. It keeps her in that state of mind. You know, if, if you have no wanting to change, and and that's what she's going to do. She's going to keep it. She lived with her mother in a trailer. Yeah, she was hardened. Very, very, very hard. Hardened. And it looks like that I was speculating that her mom was doing the same stuff. Did you pick up on that? Maybe. Maybe at one point. Or she just was just in poverty and and raised her kids. Because they didn't get really depth on where these girls came from. The background. Yeah, the background. Was there anything on her siblings? Was there abuse? Anything. I mean, they briefly touched on Jennifer. Jennifer, of the three, was the only one that was trying to reform herself. She went and got an apartment first and then tried getting a job. Then she was complaining about having to go get a 40-hour-a-week job when she was used to doing the old 40, 60, 80. Uh, right, and the truck stop, which was easier. Yeah. You know, it's not hard to get a job when you... you it is hard to get a job, I'm sorry, when you have... You know, <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, where, where are you, man? This It's, it's hard. <laughs> she, was, she was three months clean, and she was definitely getting the itch to go back. And that that's hard with addiction, because you're... You're never free from addiction. It just yeah, so he's a uh, monkey on the back. Oh, we got to explain the 40, 60, 80 uh, price schedule that we saw yeah. amongst the ladies. 40 was the mouth, 60 was straight, and 80 is everything. all the car, do what you want. <laughs> what I wanted to know is when you're high as a motherfucker on drugs, do you ask for change? <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know. I have to write down and remember what I said because I probably forget. <laughs> I <I'll laughs> totally forget. Well, how much did I charge you? All right. <laughs> yeah, you might have I some truckers on credit. I'm a prostitute. Oh, <laughs> well, we felt that the daughter, Isabella, who's Jennifer's daughter, she knew far too much well, about what Mama was up to. For a 10-year-old, yeah. I don't know if it's things that she saw or heard from other family members. But that's what I'm saying. They didn't go in depth. You don't know if this girl, Jennifer, was with somebody who, who said bad mouth her and said stuff, or the kid was there the whole time. I mean, the kid was with her. We don't know if she was ever together. Yeah, we weren't sure. Or anything else. But. No, but you could tell just during that documentary, she went from thinking, Mom's going to turn her ship around. She used to be the truck stop whore lot lizard, and now she's trying to be uh, the housewife. But she had her whole operation where she went and got the apartment and then was looking through the want ads through, like, Craigslist. No, she was looking through, like, no, the paper. Through the, yeah, the paper. But yeah. Remember, what year did you say this was? 2016? No. Well, yeah, 2016. When they filmed it. It's when they filmed it, but I could have sworn... No, that was the other documentary. Yeah, that Scratch was, that. <laughs> that was 2016, and when you don't have... The daughter was disgusted with her. And stuff, uh, at the, the end part she was, because she thought she was doing good, and she said, it, well, my mother is a liar. Well, That's because hard, I think, for anyone to hear from a 10-year-old. Because, then there was the chaplain. You know. Remember the woman, every time she'd have a bad day, when she got the job, then she had the bad day, then she was talking to the chaplain, and... Uh, crying on his shoulder and like, I just want to smoke some crack. I'm having a tough day. That's, that's addiction. And like you said, we all vent to each other. Yeah, that's, but. That's who it, she had to go to. I can't imagine. We're like, listen, I got to get back on the crack pipe, you know? The way she was gazing I, lovingly to the truck was, stop. Well, it's the same thing with alcohol. I want to be back. If you stop <laughs> drinking and then shit happens, you want to drink. I'm a smoker. A lot of the time, it, it doesn't benefit me in any way possible. I get aggravated, stressed out. I want to go have a cigarette. To me, it calms me down when it really probably doesn't. Yeah, so it's a blessing head. to have that addiction. as your crutch and not Compared have... to that stuff, yeah. yeah. I have empathy for the woman uh, for trying, and it's a, it's a battle because it's fast money. It's real fast money. Tax-free money. And you don't have to look oh, a certain yeah. way, unlike the strip club. <laughs> you don't have to work well, the pole. I don't want to be mean, but it's pretty dark. In those well, the trucker pole, bug. What the hell you look like? <laughs> Well, they could look. Can you honestly say that some of them look like they could make any money if they were in a strip club? Hell to the no. Uh, it's the darkness <laughs> outside the Kenworth. Uh, you know, you <laughs> underneath that, underneath the wheel, the got 18 some wheeler. She's got some shit going on, but these, these women, I mean, they've been alpha for a while, so, you know, I think time took a toll on the skin. Time took, yeah. Time was not kind. The one who had the time brutal. Was I like that. Time, time was, was not, not kind. kind. And you got uh, Sunshine, who was blind. And she was still out there working the, feeling the way that along the side of the truck to get into the cab. Yeah, she was. That was she had, she had blindness from uh, syphilis. syphilis. That got carried away. Yeah, she was just a... That woman, God. Could you imagine if they said she was like 42? And Meanwhile, she, she looked 82. She looked very old. And, and yeah. I showed you that picture when she was young. I think he, that gentleman said she was around there. 18. She was 18 years yeah, old. Yeah, she started when she was young. 18 years old. And then, obviously, when you're doing the 40, 60, 80 schedule, you're not going to have medical. Yeah, it was just, it's just a sad scene, but, I mean, it's, it's there, and, and these people, you know, they got to make money, and they're not going to go for a regular job. With addiction, you probably can't. You'd be running out the door looking to get high. Well, remember Moody Monica? Oh, my God, she was wired. She went from lovey-dovey with her being all shacked up in that little hotel with her boyfriend, Bobby, they had the, well, you know, it was just a dysfunctional relationship. Break up, get back, break up, get back, get high, love each other, beat each other up, get high, go get high. Yeah, she, she was throwing out. the shots. We never, in all fairness, we never saw Bobby no, throw hands. No, Bobby never put hands up. She was, like, ready to clock him. Every, One minute she was lovey-dovey, and next minute it was like, get the, f out of my face! <laughs> but at, at the end, she's on the phone with him, and, uh. He actually, it sounded like this time, he might have been it was It was over. He was like, well, gone. he came to that realization probably because he had a camera staring at his face. Like, this is never going to get better. Well, he said it to her. Yeah. And, but she also said that he's done this plenty of times and blah, blah, blah. And turned it around and came back that's because that's what he knows. They ended it with, like, just... Well, they have a co... co have, uh, what do you call it? A codependent relationship? Oh, yeah. It was toxic. Toxic codependent... You know, he was loving to her, and then she would be nasty towards him. I mean, we didn't really see the relationship with Betty and her boyfriend 
other than uh, in the beginning when the guy goes, she, I gave this crack whore my keys. She wore the pants in that relationship. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> Betty, remember Betty? They were, they were talking to each it. other, and then the cameraman is focused on truck driver man. I don't even remember his name. And then behind behind him, she was making a deal with one of the truck drivers. It's like, oh my God, this got to be humiliating. To us, it, we might yeah. feel that way, but to yeah, them, like she said, it's a job. They have to eat, they have to get high, they have to survive, and that's where they get their money from. It's all cash money. <sighs> no all taxes. Cash money. They do not pay the tax man. No, lucky them. They're not oh, getting the stimulus that's either, though. Why they made it illegal because they don't pay the tax man. Otherwise, it'd be perfectly fine. <laughs> They got a cut, whatever. Yeah, the, the tax man, you, I'm surprised he does not want his money. So, so all of you know out there, me and Leslie like our documentaries. We like to sit, have a couple cocktails. Oh, yes. And, and just see what's going on. Yes. With this real stuff. The evening uh, beverage while we were contemplating this documentary and discussing is Grey Goose and Bailey's with a uh, crunchy fudge-covered Oreo. Oh, which is delicious. It's deliciousness. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we were looking at stats, they're, they're one of the truck drivers made a very important point where he was saying, you know, how like people look down on truckers and truck stops and how he was saying 80% of the country relies on the trucking industry. Oh, yeah. And if the truck stopped, then the entire supply chain, as we know oh, it, would come to a halt. So people don't realize their dependence on the trucking industry, but they Big most time. certainly do. Big time, and that's a rough job. You get alone, it's late, you're tired, you know, you're lonely. Didn't we, <laughs> we got a kick out of those women that got on the CB radios that were advertising their services, where they were trying to say it without saying it. And everybody knew they were saying it without saying it. They all have their code words. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, they were using a massage, free massage. Free massage, I'll give you a massage, and, you know. <laughs> I'll meet you by the Mustang. Everyone knew what that meant, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then, me, and then uh, they had, uh, Monica said she never turns a trick. What the hell did that mean? Remember when she said that? I took it when she said she never turns a trick. It's never, I guess, approached a guy. Uh, oh, no, turned it down, right? No, no, no. I mean, like, rob him. I mean, when she said turn a trick. I don't know what turn a trick him. means. Go in there, say you're going to do something, and then run with his money without doing it. Oh, like, like a Cardi B. I don't know about that. Allegedly. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Much. See, now. You lost me on that one. Stick to what I know. Like, like, <laughs> Stick no, to I what I know. I don't know Cardi B shit. Okay. Well, so. apparently she told people that back in the day when she was a stripper, she would rob these dudes of their money, like drug them and rob them. With her. I know, right? <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> well, the one lady, she was but that, Betty. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Get back to that. That was just my perception. It might be the wrong definition of what she meant but that's what i took it as because she's already in there you know having sex with him for money so some people would say okay that's the trick but i look i thought it's a trick at, no I look trick at, or treat trick or treat you get <laughs> i <laughs> smell my feet the trick as being you know she didn't you know like rob anybody or fuck anybody over without doing her service yeah like it's a fair exchange uh cash for goods well, maybe she should make it a fair exchange. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to look up what a turning the trick means. No, well, unfortunately. Well, do you remember Cinnamon? Yeah, perception. Do you remember Cinnamon and Tequila? Yeah, they were briefly on there. Well, briefly. Cinnamon looked like she was young in the game. Like she had just gotten started and she has no idea how hard it's going to turn her over time. Like she's pre-STDs. I mean, okay, I wonder. <laughs> do you think people, I'm not talking about... You know, working in a nice club and, and dressing real hot and sexy and having, you know, like, like stripping like that. In their environment where it was just in a truck, you know, it's a dark lot, the trucks are over, you can't see anything. Do you think anybody, I don't know, could you do that without being high? Fuck no. Yeah, I'd have to be high as a kite and then I would probably not make change forget to ask for change <laughs> then i'd have to have some truckers on credit from like well, you, you know 20 years ago 
I feel uncomfortable so on the first date, my you know, first two dates. In your pocket, grab your shoe and run. And run. And that money up it's just like so uncomfortable. Like the thought. I mean, we joke around about it, but can you imagine doing that? Like that's your livelihood. Like that's your only way. I don't look at that. I'll never look at that as my only way to do anything in life. I'd rather that's bust my ass in a trench. That's what makes the world hang different. rock. People, different things. Sheet rock, not crack. But like I said, that's why they basically they're beginning of life we don't know they didn't really get in depth on that did they have a parent who do it were they left on the street were they were abused you know and well they all had happened. terrible stories but terrible stories doesn't mean you have to have to I'd say it was weed, but you grow go up lick a wee wee for raise, a buck you, you end up kind of sometimes raising your children the way you were raised you do what you know and then as you get older you you make more decisions yeah the power of your environment that, yeah there is a power easy. It was worth a watch. It was it was pretty wild. We had our little jokes here and there. It was of just course. harmless fun. Life is being bad. Sometimes you have to giggle. No, at the end of the day, uh, we joke around, but I think we're we're very much into people having their hustle and supporting themselves, and that's key, because that's you have to sustain your your life, and if you yeah, chose to have and, kids, and, and, you need to take care of them. Right. So. And that's just how they did it, right or wrong, good or bad. You know, I'm not judging Jerry, but it, it was well, we are judging, but. No, we let them live their life. <laughs> that was I'm not saying you're good. I'm not saying you're no. dirty, rotten hoe because you do that. Honestly, you know. Yeah, now we. You do what you got to do. I, I, some of it I thought was sad. Just to have it's to sad. Like, ah, you could see it's it. disgusting, some of it. Because yeah. you see some of the truckers and you're like, oh. I'd be a broke oh, too, I'd be like, Broke, very next, selective. Ew, next, ew, ne oh, yeah, now you. Because. You got to see Melissa with the dating profile. She's constantly swiping left. I can't picture you going, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. You must have an addiction. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm no rape and beauty. I'm not saying that. I just, you know. I got, you know. You got to be able to, you know, like what you see when you're staring at that uh, mushroom lollipop. <laughs> You know, at the end, at the end, it made us feel, the documentary made us feel that Jennifer was gazing lovingly out into the truck stop while she was doing her laundry, that she was going to get back in the game because she was already sliding into it because she did admit to that chaplain that she hit the pipe. Like, yeah, so what? It's a big no, deal. she went back to smoking. She was still smoking pot. Oh, I Just thought she was hitting the crack pipe. Did she say she smoked crack? I know she, she said something about pot. breaking out. She broke her, her sober streak. Because uh, the daughter, the daughter is the one who found the crack pipe in the, in the, the closet. Like the girl, Isabella, knew far too much about yeah, what Mama right, had up going on. She for her weed because she, she never stopped smoking the weed. That she just said to she was still smoking Well, weed. if she was still she smoking it, me, she wouldn't have had a breakdown then. I think she told her daughter that she wasn't smoking weed, and she was. And then I guess when she was looking out, you know, if she if she gets hooked back on those drugs, you know what she's doing. She's going back. She's going the lifestyle. whole the whole slide. Well, back to that lifestyle. she she was crying when she was looking at the one ads about the three hundred dollar. Uh, well, she felt guilty. That's what I kind of presume. She felt guilty because of her past. Yeah, yeah. And the crack, you know, the crack pipe. Yeah, she was. The, you know, I, a lot of it had to do with addiction. That shit was crazy. Yeah. Well. <laughs> You, you, when you feel good, I, I could see when you're you're smoking the crack, and you're doing the truck stop stuff, and then all of a sudden you turn it around, you stop, you, you get your daughter back, or I don't yeah, know if the daughter, we yeah, we don't know. It was kind of vague. I don't yeah, you don't know if she had her the whole time, or she didn't, or maybe the kid was with family and she just got her back. Who knows? I mean, she know. went for the fast. That was the fast, the fast money to try to get away from that. And she, you could already tell she felt uh, bad that she had to go do an honest job that didn't pay very much. So you already could tell from the gate that she, she was set for that free fall, that downward slide. Well, between not realizing... <laughs> to go back on that rock as a lizard. Age and work and then, yeah, you know, it's none of it's easy. You're not, Shit. You're not getting high. That's the rough part. That's worse than having to deal with, wow, I could have made this in, in one night what I'm making in a week. Well, that equally sucks. I mean, that, it's probably... The drugs almost makes it to where you go, well, I need this. I got to go back out and get the money because exactly. the money that I'm making isn't enough. So let me go, you know, slob you on a mushroom lollipop. You got to get high. Yeah. That's how, that's what a hole that shit has on people. Sad. Well, it's all, it's the fast money and, and the high. But I, I, I overall, uh, you felt sorry for every, 
I felt sorry for every one of them. And the guys, they were out on the road and he realized for them, I don't know, does it take you a couple months to be out on the road and, and away from your family to go, yeah, she looks hot, you know, the lot lizard. Whereas normally you, you'd be like, nah, I'm going home tonight to my family, buzz off. I don't think guys will look at it like, okay, that's hot. They want to get their they, get their rocks off. So you don't have to fuck it or kiss it. I mean, that's that's extra. No. Well, but you, you don't have you're, to do you're that. You're fucking it, but you don't have to off. kiss it. So a guy doesn't have to. Here's your money, blow me. I mean, you, you're looking at it. You're not. You're it's, not engaging in intimacy with. Or an person. emotional piece. Well, it is. To me, it's it. That's you're intimacy. Doing a job. Not when you're doing. A but job it's business. Like that. It's business. Not when you're doing a job like that. Yeah. So you want to get your rocks off? Here's fifty bucks. You, you, you're not even looking them. She starts blowing them. You're done. Bye bye. He doesn't even have to make sure she's out the door. He doesn't have to. He doesn't even have to put money on the dresser or get her a cab. It's like kick her out the wind, the side of the the cab. Yeah, you just gotta walk down two steps. Go well, two. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, the name of that truck driver that we found on YouTube when I was trying to find info? Uh, Blake, the guy I was talking about the lot lizards where he looked like a new truck driver. Oh, that guy was funny. Yeah. Was yeah. Like, no, no, no. I was thinking, go to hell. <laughs> I'm staying away from that stuff. Because the girl was trying to charge her, her phone, her phone in his yeah. car and then it went in his cab. So it went from charging the phone to, it's cold out here. Can I get inside? And then like, hey, how about 40 bucks? Yeah. For my mouth. <laughs> no, 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 no. So yeah. we have, we figured out what documentary we want to do next. Yes. Uh, that is the Jack the Ripper. Well, well it's no, the it Yorkshire, Yorkshire Ripper, Yorkshire which is. Yorkshire Ripper, but we got to do the women serial killers. Yes. That'll be our, our next uh, little yeah. round. Yes. Well, guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed our Absolutely. conversation. More to come, and I'm sure we'll get better at it. Or yes. Worse. Thank you for listening, and as always, if you'd like to see more content, go to YouTube, Soundtrap, uh, www.constructiontales.com. Thank you, and have a good evening. Bros and hoes! This wraps up another episode on the Verbally Disastrous podcast that can be found on over 20 podcast platforms including Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Pandora Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. For more information, head over to our website at www.constructiontales.com. I thank you for listening, and have a great day. This podcast is protected through the U.S. Copyright Office, as well as the Writers Guild of America.